Hello grade 11 biology class. Welcome back to the last lecture of the digestion unit. This is lesson nine. We're gonna talk about energy regulation. We're gonna pull in some things that we talked about um, when we talked about the pancreas. Um, I said don't worry about it too much at this time. Just know alpha and beta cells and what they, uh, what they produce. We're gonna use that later. Now we're going to use it. So you see the key points above me, homeostasis, insulin versus glucagon, alpha cells versus, pardon me, beta cells, and then glycogen. Glycogen comes back all the way from the nutrition unit, which if we remember, is how we store energy in our liver. We take the glucose and we turn it into glycogen in our um, liver. So let's start. Um, actually, there's one thing, one more thing I'd like to let you know. We're going to do a bunch of notes and talk about um, how we regulate energy. And then we're going to put that all into diagram form. And uh, if you know the diagram, you're going to be able to understand the notes very well. So we're going to um, do the notes first, then talk about the diagram, and hopefully it will all come together. And if you do have any questions, please let me know. So let's do this. Uh, energy regulation in the body. So homeostasis, key point one, is the balance of the body. Like your temperature needs to be a, in a certain range. Um, your blood pressure needs to be in a certain range. Your heart rate needs to be in a certain range. This balance is called homeostasis. So energy in our body is regulated by the hormones insulin and glucagon. We can't have too much and we don't wanna have too little so that we need to regulate it, homeostasis. Um, both of these are produced by the pancreas, both insulin and glucagon. Each act to maintain a balance in the bloodstream. So they ensure that there is just the right amount of energy, which we say glu is glucose, in the blood. They are maintaining a stable equilibrium. They essentially act against each other. If it's too high, one of them acts. If it's too low, the other one acts. Uh, the hormones control the amount of energy in the blood using a negative feedback loop. Um, this is a control system that does the opposite of whatever is going on in order to stabilize it. So remember to pause and write these things down. But what this means is that if you eat a bunch of food and your en the blood glucose, the, uh, the energy in your blood is really high, you're going to need to um, do something. Your body's going to need to do something to get that blood uh, sugar level down. Uh, so it is going to release a hormone. If it is too low, it is going to raise it up. The control system tries to raise it to or lower it to a specific point. It does the opposite of whatever is going on to stabilize it. So the, if there's high glucose levels in the blood, this would be shortly after eating, beta cells in the pancreas release insulin into the bloodstream. The effect is that most cells, your muscles, your fat tissues, your liver, take up the glucose. The liver turns the glucose into glycogen, adipose cells turn the glucose into fat. Essentially, because the glucose was high and you really, your beta cells released insulin, the blood glucose levels went down. That would make sense. If it was high, you want them to go down. That's what the beta cells do when they release insulin. They make the energy levels go down. Um, if you were to, say, not eat for a while and you're hungry, um, your blood sugar levels might be low. The alpha cells would, in the pancreas would release glucagon. So that's where these kind of go together, alpha cells and glucagon, insulin and beta cells. Uh, at the same time, insulin release is slowed down. So the glucagon will allow energy from your liver and from your fat tissues eventually to be used up. So the effect is that the liver cells turn glycogen back into glucose and release it into the bloodstream. So the normal level is between 90 milligrams per, as a brout, sorry, is approximately 90 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. There's a very interesting video you can watch here. Um, so it's in your notes as well. Um, go there and after you're done watching it, come back and we'll talk about the diagram and how this all um, works in like a loop. So here we have a really, really good figure showing how this all works. Um, we have, uh, imagine this as a balance, and this is the two different paths that we could take. So um, if the blood glucose level rises, that means that let's say we ate food, that would be going up this way if we ate. The blood glucose levels would rise, the pancreas 
would the beta cells would release insulin and that would cause the body cells and the liver cells to uptake glucose which would make the blood glucose levels decline and we would return back to our regular level. If we're to go the other way in this diagram where we don't eat for a while, that means our blood glucose levels will fall. The alpha cells in our pancreas will need to release the glucagon and the glucagon will go to the liver and break down glycogen to release glucose. If it's releasing glucose, the blood glucose levels will rise until we get back to homeostasis. So you can see how depending on uh, the stimulus, whether we have high glucose levels or low, it will get us back to the stable level. Now this can fluctuate a little bit, but that is important that it gets us back around to the stable level all the time, which is known as homeostasis or balanced. Um, there's a few questions for you to do, a little bit of research. Uh, so definitely do that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, but then we get into the digestion project, which is going to be individual this year. Uh, so if it says anything about a partner, uh, I might have missed it. Um, please just leave, just know that it's individual. You're going to create a model of the digestive system using household objects. Um, there's no necessarily due date for this project, but it does need to be done, uh, preferably if you can, before you write the test. Uh, if not, just after. But the digestion project is pretty cool. Uh, ask me about it if you have questions, but there are um, various ways to do it, and I have. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you a few of the models that I already have. After you've done the digestion project, it is time to hand in this booklet and complete the test. So um, after the digestion unit, I believe we'll move into the circula uh, circulatory system unit. Um, so if you guys have any questions before the test, don't be afraid to ask. Um, but we're moving along quite quickly. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you keeping up. Thanks very much for that. And I will see you soon um, in the circulation unit.